They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by... L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Harvest Energy Solutions. Harvest cabins when you absolutely have to get away. House warmings, meeting all of your outdoor living and fireplace needs. Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Rose Farm Supply. Family farming and commitment to our customers since 1982. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. The city of Stanford, Kentucky. Come home to Stanford. Good Foods Co-op. Barksbury Farm Market. Weisenberger Mill. Hello and welcome to the Farmer's Country Kitchen. Here we are. Look around you. I love it. It's Christmassy up here. You know what? We have a wonderful Christmas show coming your way. We have good friends. Oh, good times and good eats. Yeah, Not necessarily in that order, but you know what? We love the Christmas season. We love Christmas music. And we're going to have, here's a, little, here's a little sneak peek at what's coming up in the next couple of weeks. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Now, what happens in the wintertime around our house? Uh, don't ever eat sweets. What happens? I want chocolate. All the time. I want sweets. Yes. And there's something about the winter season that you're supposed to put weight you're on. You're supposed to. That's right. To, it's okay. To protect. Right. It'll your protect vital you. organs yes. from the cold. Exactly. And I think I'm going to be okay. You're doing really good. <laughs> you know what? Remember when we made the peanut butter pie for the girls? Yes. And we got some dark melting wafers. I and I, you know, we took her chocolate or her peanut butter pie recipe, and I thought, man, wouldn't that be good with chocolate over top of it? Now, when we made it, I thought, this would be cool for a lot of things when I'm surrounding my organs with fat to yes. protect them from the, you know. Chocolate's good for you. Chocolate's Dark chocolate is good for you. Mm -hmm. good for you. So I started thinking about that, and I, I saw something somewhere a long time ago that we're going to try to do tonight. Now, this is a really cool, it's a kind of a departure from what we do, because so much of what we do is do it yourself, gardening right. tips, and, you know, pickling things, but this is just decadent, chocolate, Bad for you. sugar, Yummy. you know what, we can do that, because yeah. it's Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen, and Nikki's Country Kitchen, we can do whatever we want. And it's the holidays, you have and to do that. And it's the holidays. That's right. Here's the deal, these melting chocolate wafers, we got us a double boiler, we mm -hmm. found an antique store, it's old, now we got already got it hot, you can see the steam coming out of there, you don't want to get it to boiling, boiling is too hot, and Sugar and chocolate does funny things. Right. You want to get this just to where it'll, it'll melt. And this is a several step procedure. I'm going to get just enough in there to where it gets nice and gooey. And then we're going to do something interesting with it, which involves a balloon. Now, this takes a few minutes to melt. Now, remember, do not get it too hot. And you really want your temperature to be around 90 degrees or less. Now, while we're melting this chocolate, Let's go visit our good friend Richard, who's in the same mindset as we are. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, we're going to get decadent here tonight with our uh, dessert, but we like to know where our food comes from. Right. And he's one of those guys. He watches what he eats. But in the meanwhile, let's go visit Richard and see what he's cooking up. 
It involves Todd's chicken. Yum. Oh yeah. We are in Garrett County today. Richard McAllister. You know what? Sometimes simple is the best. Uh, we agree. We've got a very simple pasture raised chicken. We're going to do a classic roast chicken recipe. Simple flavors. But you do a little something here that just adds a little zest. A couple of, couple of little, little things that, that, that we feel help turn it into something special. You know, the great thing about today is if you choose to do so, you can go places and find things that come from very specific areas. You can know who grew it. Absolutely. Sweet potatoes, where are they from? Just out of curiosity. Those are from Science Hill, just south of us, just north of Somerset, from Rejoicing Acres. Yeah. The chicken. The chicken is from Todd Clark's farm up in Georgetown. You visited with him Absolutely. a few weeks ago. It's the only non-stinky chicken farm I can ever remember going to. He's a top shelf farmer, top shelf producer, big part of what we're doing. We got a chicken. Mm -hmm. We've got some fresh vegetables. We know where they came from. I know where you're going with this thing. And just the very simplest of things can sometimes bring the flavors out a little bit more. And you're going to do something underneath the skin of this chicken to really make we, it flavor we it out. We're going to use a compound butter and we're going to truss the chicken, um, tie it in a way that helps uh, keep the juices in, roast it evenly. I just noticed something, yes, an sir. accent. Scott. Let me see if I can place it. Okay. Mercer County. Clay County. I played ah, ball with great. Richie Farmer. <laughs> McAllister, maybe <laughs> they'll right. figure that one out. You are from Scotland. Uh, I am. I'm from. I'm from originally from Dumfries, Scotland, uh, and but I've lived here. You're getting some Kentucky in I there. I married a girl from 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 Danville, Kentucky, and hence I, I'm here. You're getting some Kentucky. Yeah. It's it's kind of it's kind of wearing the, I know. This, the Scottish. I know. I've been here a while, <laughs> so I've uh, I've become uh, uh, I guess uh, localized. Well, I'll tell you what, I like what you do. Let's take that chicken and do something with it. Sure. First thing I'm going to do is uh, get these veggies ready because what we're gotcha. going to do is we're going to use these vegetables as a rack upon which to roast the chicken. All the lovely juices go down, get in there with the veggies, mm -hmm. flavor the veggies, create a fond in the bottom of this. Okay. Spell that for our viewers. F-O-N-D. French term. I'm fond of that. Yes, it is. <laughs> so uh, here's what we're going to do. Carrots, now these are just roughly chopped, as you can see. Uh, rustic, nothing fancy here. Um, more rustic. Yeah. What we're trying to do is we're trying to create a meal in the roasting pan. Ready to go. One pan. One pan, super easy, cook it all together, and then take it to the table for your family. And if you choose to, you know, a chicken this size can feed well, if it's me and I'm by myself, I can eat the whole you thing. Can have a, you can have Mickey and I can, can <laughs> you know, you can feed four people. Yeah, it depends on the appetite. Sure. I mean, this is, as I say, is a three and a half pounder. Right. If it's a big family or family with 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 teenage you might pop another kids, chicken you, in there. you may roast two on. But this, you know, you can do it very easily. Uh, so olive oil, super easy. We're just going to toss it in the bowl. Salt and pepper. Veggies are ready. So we're going to arrange onions cut in half, whole onions cut in half, just a, just a couple of them in the center of the and, roasting pan. And that's pan. your rack. And that's the rack upon which the bird sits. And, and then it, we'll arrange the each, veggies around it. Each imparts flavor in the other sure. as, as, it, yeah. as it airs it up. Yeah. Too. Again, you know, there's nothing simpler than roast chicken couple of little details that help elevate it. The, the, you can't hardly make this go wrong. Well, so now we're going to prep the chicken. Pasture raised chicken. Right down the road. We, we know exactly where this came from. Now um, what we're trying to do, what we've done is taken butter, some Dijon mustard, salt and pepper, garlic, fresh herbs. We happen to use rosemary because we had it. And what we're going to try to do with this is we're going to try and get it up under the skin of the chicken so that as it cooks it bastes pretty simple. You've got to just loosen the skin a wee bit with the finger. Some people, this gives them a little bit of a heebie-jeebie, but <laughs> it's the end product. So we're just going to squeeze that up under the skin, a couple of little pats of, uh, of that compound butter in there on either side. Super simple. And then we're going to season the bird liberally, salt and pepper. You know, more, more salt and pepper than you would expect on the exterior. It'll help give that 
skin just a little crispier skin on mm. the outside if you can get that salt on there that simple now what we're going to do if you notice we've got the wing tips tucked under the bird there we're then going to take a piece of kitchen twine and we're going to do something called trussing the chicken which is going to plump it up tighten the legs across the back and hold them in so that you get an even roasting and it keeps the juices in there. These don't get overcooked and things don't start to look a little ragged on the bird. Super simple. Piece of string. You're going to loop it around the front of the bird, under the breast, over the wings. Bring it between the drumsticks. You're going to do one simple loop here come under the drummies and tie it on the top. Now what I do is what's called a surgeon knot, which is if you loop this three times rather than just twice, it'll hold that string Ready to go. while you tie it back, you see? It, mm. won't contain, it won't loosen itself up, but it allows you to get a tight knot without it slipping on you. So we have a trussed chicken. You, you can stuff it with other things if you choose, but this is as simple as it gets. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some more of this compound butter there on the front because this is going to melt down and also flavor our veggies in there. So there we have it. Very simple. And then as I say, we're just going to put that up Your on, its, is preheated, I'm on sure its rack to... Yeah, to 400. So there we go again. Salt and pepper, liberal seasoning. How long we can let this guy go for? Well, we're gonna go for about an hour and 15. We'll jump in there after about 30 minutes and I'll spoon some of that butter and baste it over the top of the chicken, maybe once or twice through the whole process. Mm. And uh, you'll, you'll see what it looks like here in an hour and 15 when we get it out. Let's get it on the table and we'll carve it up. I'm not scared to eat. Excellent. We let the bird rest for a while out of the oven. We basically have a meal in the roasting pan. Roast chicken, veggies underneath it. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, <laughs> let's do this. Now, uh, obviously, you've got the choice, uh, whether it's uh, the dark meat or breast meat on the bird. We'll just separate there. You know what my favorite is? The thigh. Well, we'll just take that and cut a wee piece off the thigh for you. That's the chicken thigh, and we got a wee bit of the, if you want the skin, and some of the compound butter. Oh, and then, man. there's nothing simpler, and nothing really more rewarding than roast chicken. Particularly from a pasture-raised bird, such as this one. A lot of times with the skin on top, you don't get, that flavor doesn't sink in. Right, you get base the uh, breast meat up underneath the skin. There's, there mm. it is left. You can see the rosemary and the salt and pepper and I the garlic. Need to, I probably need to try you probably need to try that there. with that with, the with that on. salted crispy skin there. Yeah, I yeah. can probably imagine. Now, of course, we've got sweet potatoes, celery, carrots, and we roasted the uh, the onions. That's a meal. Up, and you can see the underside of the onions is what I like in mm. particular because they've got what the French call the fond at the bottom of the pan roasted in there. Now I'm just gonna. Yep. Dig in with my fingers. Dig in. And the great thing about that one pan. Done. Then if you chose to do so, if nobody's looking, you could eat out of the pan. You see in the bottom of the pan, mm -hmm. that is what I referred to as the fond. It's all the really nicely browned pieces in the bottom of the pan. Part well, of I our... could destroy that by myself. Excellent. You want to shake my greasy hand? Love to. Been Thank a pleasure. Much. That was delicious. Great. Perfect. Look at here. Ooh. It's right where we need to be. Go ahead. Ready? Now here's the odd part. Out there, bigger. Yeah, a little bit bigger. Why do we have right a there? balloon? Yep. Why, why do we have a balloon? And it's Christmas green. Oh, I love chocolate. And they're finding out more and more that dark chocolate is good for you, which uh, I've been suspecting that for years. Because you eat it every day. Because why am I so healthy? I'm 84 years old. Are you? Chocolate. That's your 85. Now, here's what we're going to do. 
I have made me a little stand over here. See that right there? Does anybody see where I'm going with this? You can take your balloon. Go ahead and pull that pan out, if you will. And just tip it up on its side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our balloon. Now here's where you do not want your, your chocolate too hot or it will pop the balloon. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to reach in there and I'm going to roll it around. I like this. And I'm going to let it dry just a little bit. Let it roll around in there. Let it set up just a hair until you have what you suspect is enough chocolate to set up once you put it in the refrigerator and make you a bowl, mm. a receptacle. You know, mm. recently in the culinary world, someone passed away that was very famous. I just found out about this the other day, but it's a very sad thing. We're gonna have the Moron Brothers tell you about, they're gonna read a eulogy. Uh -oh. It's a very sad story. Let's, yeah, let's, I bet. let's, let's <laughs> visit with the Moron Brothers. I'm Lardo. And I'm Burley. And we're, we're the, the Moron, Moron Brothers. Brother. Got a frog in my throat. All right, I got some bad news here. I hate to share it, but I need to. It's fresh off the press. It says here, please join me in remembering a great icon of the entertainment community here in America. The Pillsbury Doughboy died yesterday from a yeast infection and complications from too many pokes in the belly. He was 71. Doughboy was buried in a lightly greased coffin. Dozens of celebrities turned out to pay their respects, including Mrs. Butterworth, Hungry Jack, Betty Crocker, and Hostess Twinkies. Ain't your mama delivered the you lo you 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 lo you lo you lo said some kind words about the old boy and lovingly described him as a man who never knew how much he was needed. The old boy rose quickly in show business, but his later life was filled with turnovers. He was not considered to be a very smart cookie, wasting much of his dough on half baked schemes. Despite being a little flaky at times, he was a crusty old man and was considered by millions to be a role model. Doe boy survived by his wife, Play Doe. Two children, John Doe and Jane Doe. Plus, he had one in the oven. He is also survived by his elderly father, Pop Tart. The funeral was held at 3.50 for 30 minutes. <laughs> okay, here we are. I'm gonna let this I'm gonna let this set up just a little bit. Then I'm gonna stick it right on my stand. See where I'm going? You got a little bowl. You got a little bowl. Now, we're gonna let that set there for just a few minutes. Pop it in the freezer for a couple of hours. Okay. Let it let it solid up. And then you're gonna have something wonderful. Now we've all had great ideas come from us, food things from our parents and grandparents. Right. And we like to visit with folks and talk about their past. Let's talk to your mom, who okay. is Nikki as well, okay. about some of her experiences as a kid growing up in the food industry. Her parents had a restaurant. Yeah, they did. Let's talk to the other Nikki. Okay. All right, we got the oil lamp burning tonight. We're talking to Grandma. This is Nikki's mom, Nikki. It's like big Greek wedding. My daughter Nikki, my son Nick, Nikki, 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 Nikki. And you're, Uncle Uncle Nick and Great Uncle Nick from Greece. See, mm -hmm. there you go. And you're from, you know, your family is from Greece. Your father came over on the Carpathia. Yes, the same year that the Titanic went down, 1912. 1912. That was in April. He came over October. Of now, that year. he wanted to make his life better, yes. and he wanted to send money back to Greece. Yes, which he did. And he wanted an opportunity. Yes. From the island of Keithra? Keithria, yes. Keithria. Now, he came over to this country, and he worked hard, yes. but he liked his Greek food. He liked lamb. He liked all that sort of stuff. All kind of wild animals he loved, too. What do you remember eating as a kid? His raccoon with, with cinnamon in it. A raccoon? Raccoon, yeah. So he liked wild game, all that sort of stuff. We would wake up Christmas morning and there were 
I had six siblings. He would get his deer every year and he would take the feet or the hoofs of the deer and the ashes from the fireplaces, he would have the hoof, hoof prints of the deer. And we were firm believers that the deer even came down so into the room. No yeah, kidding. footprints of the deer, yeah. Now see, you know, I, I know a guy wrote a book, he says you should always remember, never forget, always remember. And I think that's so important to remember, you know, even when you look around the kitchen here, when I went to my grandparents' house, that's the sort of stuff I saw. You know, that's the antiquity holds such a special place in my heart and, and Nikki's heart. What do you what do you think about when you look at that kitchen back there? What do you think about antiquity? And you think about, you know, the kitchens you grow up, grew up in and your times in the kitchen. Do you remember your parents cooking together after the hustle and bustle of the restaurant? Oh yeah, they they cooked all the time. But when I look at this stuff here in your cabin, I remember my mother's mother from Indiana, Pennsylvania. Her kitchen was in the basement. And I remember sitting on the stairs as she was baking bread and cooking the chicken and just sitting on the steps and her talking to me. That's a very fond memory. So you had how many siblings? I had six. Of course, you were the best of the bunch, right? I, yes, I think so. Absolutely, no doubt about it. <laughs> they had lots of kids so they could do the chores oh, yeah. and help out around the farm. Yeah. You know, kids used to have duties. You know, my parents showed me how to go out and do things, and, and you, you develop that work ethic like yeah. that. I'm sure you had your chores as well. What were your yeah. chores? You remember chores? It was always <laughs> Taking care of all your... Yeah, that's the source, but I was always thrown on me. I was the, the, four, the fifth girl, and my older sisters were just kind of too busy with everything else. So, no, I learned how to wash clothes, iron clothes, vacuum. That's good practice for Bill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, what's the next step? Pop the balloon. Then you simply just kind of peel it off the sides. All right, now you just simply, it's almost out, you just peel it. Try not to break it, I broke a little bit off. But you know, irregularity does not hurt this. So, okay, we want, we're gonna split this one. Now picture if you had a bunch of people coming over, or not, just a little private party, and you want to be fancy schmancy and have something really pretty for your Christmas party. Yeah, I'm all about those Calories, you know, I got a beef up. Some mint in there. Some mint. And the best thing of all about this is you can eat your bowl when you're done. I like that. Now, we had a little party the other night, and our friend Melinda was over, and she made, what does she call this? Texas sheet cake? Yeah. It's, it's like brownies, which is more decadence. Just lay that in Yum. the side, like so. Need a little cherry. Here's for the Christmas. Green. One green, one red. More than that. We got we do do all kinds of cheers. Oh my, look at that. Further decadence? Yeah. A little bit of chocolate fudge because we don't have nearly Not enough. Chocolate. And just a little bit of chocolate. <laughs> bit we of need whipped cream. That looks awesome. So there you are. Our little scrumptious chocolate ball. Do we get to eat it? We get to eat it. But first of all, <gasps> let's talk about the fact that folks need to check out our Facebook page. Yes, they do. And like it, see where we're going, what we're doing places we might show up. You know, we're finding some great restaurants and we'll tell you when you'll be there. Come join us for dinner sometime. Also, check out our YouTube page. People are watching us from all over the world. And remember, it's all about... Good times. Chocolate! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's grab a bite of this. Look at that. Wait a minute. I don't know if I can eat it. It is too pretty. It's too pretty. I could probably eat it. Now look at that. Is that not a nice little Christmassy... Can we eat the bowl? Oh, you can eat the bowl. Mm. Some of the brownie. Uh, oh, mm, mm, mm. Mm. It is all about good times. Good friends. And good eats. We'll see you next week with our Christmas show. Yay, it's Christmas. Yay, let's eat. Oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to Furniture World Superstore, Kinco Farm Fence Supplies, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm.
Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Harvest Energy Solutions, harvest cabins when you absolutely have to get away. House warmings, meeting all of your outdoor living and fireplace needs. Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office, try something different tonight. Rose Farm Supply, family farming and commitment to our customers since 1982. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. The city of Stanford, Kentucky. Come home to Stanford. Good Foods Co-op. Marksbury Farm Market. Weisenberger Mill.